who has Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has used his blessings and bounties gathered here in this blessed gathering I ask him subhanahu jalla fi ula to please accept from all of us and to protect and serve and help the ummah of our beloved prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from the ordeals that the entire ummah is living from within and from outside of it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be with all of us. Barakatul Qur'an al-Azim wa hirmati rasulihi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But with all these afflictions as Muslims, we should review the teachings of our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nowadays, one of the biggest problems we have is what we call al-jaza. Al-jaza, lack of patience, lack of spirit of sabr, not thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with what we have already had. Because whatever situation you think you are in, there is one even worse situation than yours, than yours. Sometimes you have problems with your eyes that prevents you from going to work days, weeks, or even months. But think about this, that there is a person that has never got the opportunity of seeing or the sweetness of knowing this very beautiful weather. You can be with your friends talking about colors, red, blue, green, but there is a person that has never known or has never got an idea of what you're talking about because since the day one of his life, he cannot see you. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't give him these blessings of eyes. So rather, one should be very thankful with the eyes that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to him. <coughs> one should be very grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by looking what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants, by not going, by not using these eyes to go to the wrong path, to the wrong way, to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You will see a person who can never help their parents, their mother, father, or their families, even their own selves. Why? Because physically, they're not fit. You were born with complete limbs. Some people were born without hands, without arms, without foot, without legs, without this and without that. Yet we still do not see these blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sometimes you talk about jobs and there is a person who is dumb. He sees you laughing but he has no idea of what you are talking about. Why? Because of his lack of ears. And sometimes you're talking to a person who cannot say anything but ah, e, or u, and you feel the pain that he gets getting out what he wants to you to understand because he's mute. And you have been blessed. We have been blessed with tongues. We have been blessed with these beautiful blessings of a lisan. Do we value it? Do we know how lucky? All of us are. And sometimes you can see people laughing at someone who is mentally maybe ill. And to him, 
these kids who are laughing, they are happy seeing him. These people are happy because he is with them. They love him, knowing not that they laugh at him. Why? Because he is mentally ill. And the only one who killed the pen that time is that very poor lady who gave birth, who gave birth to him. Who is that, that very faithful Muslim who is in the presence of that God way. Why? It is just because we didn't have these blessings that we are all possessing. The blessing of a sound mind. This is why Ibn al-Qayyim al-Juzi used to say, Subhanallah, glory is to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because man, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made everything that he divided into the other beings. He said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave intelligence to the angels. And he gave desires to the animals. The first category are intelligent, but they don't feel any desire whatsoever. And the second category, which is the animals, have desires, but have no intelligence whatsoever. As for man, have everything. Man can be a shaitan, he can be an angel, he can be an animal, he can be whatever he wants to be. لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانِ فِي أَحْسَنِ تَحْوِيلِ so if one uses his mind and uses his ears, his eyes, his limbs, all that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to him as means to meet the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is a believer, this is a Muslim, this is the type of person that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to see. But he doesn't want to see Someone who always complains. I, didn't, I don't have this, I want this, I want that. Look at what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to all of us. Let us listen to our mother, Sayyidah Aisha radiallahu ta'ala. She said that, In awwala bid'atin hadathat hun nas, In awwala bid'atin hadathat hun nas, bid'at al shaba. She says that the first bid'ah that people have ever have, have ever innovated is the bid'ah of eating until one becomes filled, full, full stomach. She says that's the first bid'ah that they ever innovated after the Prophet because it didn't happen. The Prophet has never eaten until he gets full. What does that teach? It teaches that whenever one is full in his stomach, let him know that his spirit is empty and hungry. Let him know that all the doors of shaitan are open. And being full, not only in stomach, but in dunya. The eyes do not see anything but dunya. The ears do not want to listen anything but dunya. The legs does not, do not want to go anywhere but dunya. There is no Allah's presence in the house. If we, are, if we arrive to that state, it becomes very, very hard for, for us, especially when we are meeting with these afflictions. So when one has any type of this bala, of this uh, afflictions that one knows, from whom he got this. Allah subhanahu wa tubaraka wa ta'ala says in Surah Tawbah, Kullam yusibana illa ma kataballahu lana. Kullam yusibana illa ma kataballahu lana. Wa huwa maulana wa ala Allahi fal yatawakkal il mu'min. That whatever happens to us, it is because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wills that this happens to us. And whatever happens to us, there is a replacement from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala according to Allah and his beloved prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The one who has, who has no eyes, the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says that whoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes his two beloved ones, Habibatayn, he called it. He called them Habibatayn, the two loved ones that you used to see, to read, 
to go, to do whatever he wants. He said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will have no replacement except the best of all replacement that is the Jannah. The pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Prophet sallallahu said, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you the affliction of losing one of your loved ones, you, you have two children, three children, one child that you lose, there is no reward but Jannah. But Jannah. And go, the list goes on and on and on. That means that the Prophet وسلم, he says in another hadith, عَجَبًا لِأَمْرِ الْمُؤْمِنِ إِنَّ أَمْرَهُ كُلُّهُ خَيْرٌ عَجَبًا لِأَمْرِ الْمُؤْمِنِ He said that it is amazing the affair of a Muslim, of a believer. As for all his affair is good. إِنَّ أَمْرَهُ كُلَّهُ خَيْرٌ إِذَا أَصَابَتْهُ الصَّرَاءَ شَكَرْ فَكَانْ خَيْرًا لَهُ وَإِذَا أَصَابَتْهُ الضَّرَاءَ صَبَرْ فَكَانْ خَيْرًا If good happens to him, he thanks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he said that is good for him. And if bad happens to him, he is patient and that is good for him. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he promised in the Quran that all these afflictions will happen. ولنبلونكم حتى نعلم المجاهدين منكم والصابرين ونقضي اخباركم ولنبلونكم بالشر والخير فتنه so he has promised us in the quran that we will be afflicted it depends on him subhanahu wa ta'ala what types of tests he is pleased with for us to gain his pleasure he never punishes us by only giving us this type of afflictions. No. If he wanted to get rid of us, he killed us and take us to fire. But if he gives you any affliction, as long as he leaves you alive, know that he is giving you a chance for you to get closer to him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Are we reading it or are we not reading it? But this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought us here for. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم تبارك الذي بيده الملك وهو على كل شيء قدير الذي خلق الموت والحياة ليبلوكم ليبلوكم أيكم أحسن عملا وهو العزيز الغفور وهو العزيز الغفور. so he said that the reason why he brought us to this dunya is to put us into examination into a test and see who is gonna to be who is going to be successful from this or in this test. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make all of us from all of those who will be successful in barakat al-Qur'an al-Azim wa hurmat al-Rasulih al-Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. And if one wants to arrive there, <coughs> one should try himself or one should know himself first of all because the people of Allah Whoever knows himself knows his Lord. And as I start with the uh, sayings of Imam Ibn Qayyim, rahimahullah ta'ala, that in man there is the arrogance of Iblis, in man there is the transgression, the transgression and the uh, badness of Thamud, of uh, Ad, of Namrud of Fir'aun, of all this kind of uh, tyrant people or tyrant groups. You have all of that in the nafs. But nafs also can change until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speak with it, until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks to it, until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put his knowledge into it. قَدْ أَفْلَحَ مَنْ زَكَّاهَا وَقَدْ أُخَابَ مَنْ نَسَّاهَا بَعْدَ قَوْلِهِ فَأَلْحَمَهَا فُجُورَهَا وَتَقْوَاهَا so if one does not, does not uh, care about the self, then one will be uh, from among the losers. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from that. So my dear brothers and sisters, <coughs> the self or the ego is the worst enemy and the most difficult one to deal with. As an imam, uh, Sufyan al-Thawri, rahimahullah ta'ala, 
used to say, "Ma alaytu shay'an ashadu min nafsi." Ma alaytu shay'an ashadu min nafsi. I have never fought. I have never fought with anything or anyone who is harder, who is more difficult to fight against than my own self. Yawmun liya wa yawmun alayhi. Because there is a day that I win and another day that she wins. And this is what happens. It is an eternal fight between us and our own self. Because a'da adu wina al-nafs al-lazi bayna janbay. Al-nafs al-lazi bayna janbay. bayna janbay. The our own self that we take care of, that we do everything to satisfy is our worst enemy ever. According to our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is why Malik ibn Zina radiallahu ta'ala anhu rahimah used to say, رَحِمَ اللَّهُ عَبْدًا قَالَ لِنَفْسِي أَلَسْتِ صَاحِبَةَ كَذَا أَلَسْتِ صَاحِبَةَ كَذَا ثُمَّ ذَمَّهَا ثُمَّ خَطَمَهَا ثُمَّ أَلْزَمَهَا كِتَابَ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى فَكَانَ لَهَا قَائِدًا He says that may Allah have mercy on a servant who speaks with his own self and remind him of himself the bad actions and the bad deeds that he has done before. Saying to his own self, aren't you the owner of this? Aren't you the one who did this and that? And he says that then you bring the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as your guide, as the guide of your own self. And like this person is the one who will be successful. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from all, all of those who speaks with themselves, who talk to themselves, who do not want themselves to be satisfied with themselves, rather for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be satisfied with themselves. And Al-Imam Abu Bakr al-Warraq radiallahu ta'ala anhu wa rahimah used to say, Ista'in ala sayrika ila Allah, Ista'in ala sayrika ila Allah, bitarki man shagalaka an Allah. He says, if you want to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then you seek help, you seek help with uh, whatever, with leaving anything that uh, takes your attention from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whatever that can be, can prevent you from being there, let all of this out of your mind. And he says that there's nothing that removes your attention, that takes you away, that turns you away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than your, your own self. وَلَيْسَ بِشَاغِلٍ يُشْغِلُكَ عَنِ اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ كَالنَّفْسِكَ الَّذِي هِيَ بَيْنَ جَنْبَيْكَ This is why one of the ulama, uh, Imam Al-Mujahid, rahmatullahi alayhi, used to say, مَنْ أَعَزَّ نَفْسَهُ أَضَ اللَّهُ اللَّهُ وَمَنْ أَذَلَّ نَفْسَهُ أَعَزَّهُ اللَّهُ Whoever puts himself up, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts him down. But whoever takes and puts himself down, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes him up. This is مصداقاً لقول رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم من تواضع بالله رفعه الله أن الإمام الثوري رحمة الله عليه one of the greatest تابعي uh, of the greatest salaf used to say الزهد في الناس uh, الزهد في الدنيا هو الزهد في الناس that if you, be, you want to practice asceticism uh, you have to practice it with the people first of all meaning make the people meaningless to you. That does not, it doesn't mean that you don't respect them. But when it comes to worship, forget anyone else but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When he comes to please, do not look at the pleasure of anyone else but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said that az-zuhdu fi dunya huwa az-zuhdu fi nas. Az-zuhdu fi dunya huwa az-zuhdu fi nas. And wa awwalu dhalik zuhduka fi nafsi. And the first one from among the people whom you have to turn your back away is your own self. Your own self. To give it to whom? To Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Az-zuhdu fi nas az-zuhdu fi dunya huwa az-zuhdu fi nas Wa awwalu dhalik, zuhdu ka fi nafsi. Ada qawlu sufyani thawri rahmahullahu ta'ala. And these are the people who know, who practice, who follow, the footsteps of our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. So if we are in a time where our, our desires overcome us, we are longing for money, longing for health, longing for life, longing for this and for that, but few of us are longing for Allah subhanahu 
wa ta'ala may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from that little qillah that long for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is what Allah says himself in surah Yusuf wa ma yu'minu aktharuhum bil lahi illa wa hum mushrikun he said to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in this ayat wa ma wa ma aktharu an-nas wa la harsu bil mu'minin and he told him wa ma yu'min aktharuhum bil lahi illa wa hum mushrikun that most of the people even though you want it you want everybody to accept Islam but most of them will not be true believers and he said even though who become true believers they will not become believers until right after they become associates you associate with your money your your, your everything Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sometimes come last Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from that this is why Khalid ibn Ma'dan rahimahullah rahimahullah alayhi wa radiya anhu used to say that la yafqahu ar-rajul لا يفقه الرجل كل الفقه حتى يرى الناس في جنب الله امثال الابائر ثم يرجع الى نفسه فيكون لها احقر حق he said that one will not be a knowledgeable person will not understand anything until when it comes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he sees all people are just camels cattle and he say right from there he goes to him to his own self and see himself as the least important thing ever and he says this is the only way of one to get the true knowledge because true knowledge is not the knowledge that we learn from the book only the true knowledge is the knowledge of practicing what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants this is what Imam Ash-Shafi'i rahimahullah ta'ala he says that I used to memorize I used to memorize every single thing that I see why did I, I see it and then I memorize it he said one day I was going to the marketplace palace and his sister was walking before me and then he says that she lifted her, her garment and accidentally I saw her tool not not anything but the tool the tool of the uh, of the sister he says that from there I become having problem memorizing and he said I went to Waqi' and told him what happens Waqi' was uh, one of the greatest sheikh of his time and he says shakawtu ila Waqi' su ahibbi fa arshadani ila tark al ma'asi wa a'lamani bi annahu ilm nur وأعلمني بأن العلم نور ونور الله لا يعطى لعاصي. He said I went to Waqi and told him that I become having difficulty to memorize. He said to me that knowledge is light of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the light of Allah will not go to those who disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So look at how much knowledge is spread nowadays. How much we have advanced nowadays and how much people are suffering nowadays why because there is no barakah in the knowledge that we have why because this knowledge has no taqwa as a companion because this knowledge is only for the self is only for the ego and the ego is full of ego it's full of itself this is because this is why we have everything but we have nothing at all look at what happens in the world nowadays killing people like animals and nobody talks before in a neighborhood when someone practices something that is wrong the whole neighborhood come and correct that person but nowadays you see two people fighting divorce you don't want to even be witness you don't even want to involve subhanallah in all this this is the world of animal that we live in and we call it the world of technology of advancement of this and that all this progressive words we use we just pulling ourselves this is the world of environment wallahi the, the years of peace the years of uh, of, of life have passed that those, those are the years the days of our beloved prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam we cannot have it now collectively but please we muslims we can have it wallahi wal quran al azim wa dhikrhum bi ayyam allah allah says to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam remind them the days of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and wallahi wal quran al azim these are the days of allah the days of this people 
the days of the Prophet وسلم, or his companions, the days of the beloved prophets, they went through something, through things that are harder than what we are going through, but they never complained. The Prophet وسلم, in the beginning of Islam, when they were being harmed, he said to the Sahaba, when they asked him to ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remove this, he said to them that people before you, you they would have their bodies taken into two parts just because they believed in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And not only the normal people, but the prophets, such as Prophet Zakaria and Yahya And whatever afflicts you also, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us in the Quran about uh, the Prophet Ayyub. He said, Ni'ma al-abdu innahu Allah. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala afflicted him with a disease of 18 years. A prophet. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Nuh alayhi salam, one that is close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah made him lose his own family. He lost them how? He lost them by not believing in him. They didn't believe in him. They were fighting him. And he thought that this were, this was, these were his own children. Allah said, no. إنه ليس من أهلك إنه عمل غير صالح ولا تسأل أني ما ليس لك به علم إني أعيدك أن تكون من الجاهلين قال ربي إني أعوذ بك أن أسألك ما ليس لي به علم وإلا تغفر لي وترحمني أكون من الخاسرين If he deals with his Safwa Nuh one of the greatest creations of Allah سبحانه وتعالى as Allah say وإذا قدنا من النبيين ميثاقه ومنك ومن نوح وإبراهيم وموسى وعيسى بن مريم وأخذنا منهم ميثاقا غليظا According to the teachings of our beloved Prophet, these five people are the best of all mankind. Noah is one of them, alayhi salatu wa salam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala afflicted him with so many afflictions, such as losing his own children, such as being laughed at by his own people, such as calling them for a thousand years, but 50, and none but 80 people answered it. And they were accusing him, mocking on him, إن تسخروا منا فإنا نسخر منكم كما تسخرون فسوف تعلمون من يأتيه عذاب يرضيه ويحل عليه عذاب مقيم. These are our fathers. These are our models. These are our people we have to look at. لقد كان لكم في رسول الله سوة حسنة لمن كان يدعو الله واليوم الآخر وذكر الله كثيرا. These are the people we need to look at so that we can change ourselves from within, not from outside. If you look at people and see they are bad, that means you're not really going to change. Let us see the bad in us, first of all. And see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his creations. That's why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that whenever there's fitna, the best of that time is the one who behaves like this one of the two sons of Adam. That was Qabil. When, when that was Habil. When his brother Qabil told him, I will kill him. He said, "In basabta ilayhi yajda kali taqtula ni maana bi basabta ilayhi yajda kali taqtula inni ya khazlaha rabbal alamin inni yawhid an tabu ab ismi wa ismi ka fatakuna min ashab al nair wa zalik al jaza al zalim." So wrongdoings have been here forever, but nowadays, whatever Quran tells us in the Quran that people so and so did it, and because of that, Allah destroyed them. We are witnessing it by ourselves and by anyone else. That is the case. But the killing, the fighting, the jealousy, the ignorance, the arrogance have always been here. The first one who has committed this very sin of murder is the first child of our father Adam His firstborn killed his own brother. Because Qabil has a sister called Iqlima, and that time they didn't have enough People, then the twin sister of this brother will be married uh, to, the twin to the twin brother of that brother. But Qabil said no, because Aklima was more beautiful that, than, 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 than his brother's twin. That, that teaches us also that the physical appearance has always been here. Attracting people, attracting men, attracting this and that. These attractions Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put them here in the, in the things, in the women, in everything. But he wants you to use this as means for you to get the, the reward and the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
And because of that, the Prophet was saying that every single sin that one has ever done, the first son of Adam will get his part. Every single murder, that very son of Adam, Habib, will get, will get his part. So the Adam, the first being created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as mankind, as a man, his own son, rather than following what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave and told him, he is the first one who get out of the line. That means that let us never be fooling ourselves because of we are Muslims, because of Allah is generous, Allah is forgiveful, because we are part of the Ummah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. No, Allah is forgiving, is ever forgiving, but he is the most severe in punishment, it says in the Quran. Innahu la ghafuru rahim, but he says also that innahu innahu la shadidu la aqab. Aghafiri zanbi wa qabili tawb. This is why one of the ulama used to say that his knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and goodness would be God, would be uh, gained just because of the hasab, because of the, the highness of the rank of your family, then the family of the Prophet would have the highest rank in knowledge and close in getting close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But we see the owner uncle of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in And he's the uncle of the Prophet sallallahu So only goods can change us and only self ascetism uh, uh, criticism self we got to review ourselves wallahi wal quran al azim has muslim because the whole quran entire the entire quran deals with one's heart with one's nafs with one's ruh with one's uh, way of life and before anything can be changed we have to be changed from our self may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for all of us and may he subhanahu wa ta'ala enable this ummah of our beloved prophet muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to return to the way and the way is no way but the way of our beloved prophet muhammad alayhi wa sallam as long as we think as long as we think that there is a solution other than the solution of rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam we will never be happy we will never have what we want except in islam in medina in the fire in islam ma khabatna bin kitab min shay wa man yabtaghi ghayr al islam dinan falan yuqbala minhu wa huwa fil akhirati min al كيف يهدي الله قوما كفروا بعد إيمانهم وشهدوا أن الرسول حق وجاءهم البينات الله لا يهدي القوم الظالمين أولئك جزاؤهم أن عليهم دعنة الله والملائكة والناس أجمعين ما الله سبحانه وتعالى make us know ourselves as servant and know him سبحانه وتعالى as the Lord and may he سبحانه وتعالى give us the tawfiq of following his guidances that we always Ask for every single day we say Ihdin of Sirat al Mustaqim. But when we act, we're acting like the Sirat of Iblis. And that is very unfortunate. And it is very sad that we see what you see today in Egypt. And the own the, the Muslim countries are those who are now helping these people that are turning are, are, are killing their own people. When the power was taken from, from the president Mursi. The first one who got with millions of dollars was Saudi, was uh, Al Imara, was Al Ordan. What is this? Helping your own brothers, killing your own brothers. Helping your own people, killing your own people. And you naming, you calling yourself that you represent Islam. This is the world in which we are living. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save all of us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put back the rahmah in the heart of the Muslims. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us work collectively as Muslims and may He subhanahu wa ta'ala make us powerful and may He subhanahu wa ta'ala make us true believers and may He subhanahu wa ta'ala guide the world. May He subhanahu wa ta'ala guide the world. May He subhanahu wa ta'ala guide the entire world to this path of our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Alhamdulillah, salatu wassalamu ala ashabi muslimin wa rasulillah. 
اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا وحبيبنا محمد كما صليت وسلمت وبارك على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم المجيد اللهم صل على ملائكتك والمقربين وعلى انبيائك والمرسلين وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين اللهم اغفر لنا ولوالدينا ولعائلتنا ولمن صدقنا بالايمان مغفره عظمى اللهم انا نسالك من كل خير سالك من سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ونعوذ بك من كل شر سعادك من سيدنا محمد عليه الصلاه والسلام اللهم اغفر لنا ما قدمنا وما اخرنا وما اسرنا وما اعلنا وما انت اعلم به منا ربنا اتنا في الدنيا حسنه والى اخره حسنه وقنا عذاب النار واعذنا يا رب من فتنه المحيا والممات ومن فتنه القبر ومن فتنه المسيح الدجال ومن عذاب النار وسوء المصير اللهم انصر الاسلام والمسلمين اللهم انصر الاسلام والمسلمين اللهم انصر الاسلام والمسلمين وأعلى كلمتك كلمة الحق والدين يا رب العالمين واجعلنا يا رب من الذين لا تطيع الله وجلت قلوبهم وإذا تبيت عليهم آياته زادتهم إيمانا وعلى ربهم يتوكلون اللهم اجعلنا من المتوكلين عليك حقا ومن المؤمنين بك حقا ومن الموقنين بك حقا واجعلنا يا رب لك عبادا محدا خالصة لك ولوجهك الكريم يا رب العالمين واجعلنا يا رب من خلفاء رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم في قوله وفعله وعمله ودينه وفي معاملته مع الناس ولو مع غيره يا رب العالمين اللهم صل وسلم على سيدنا ونبينا محمد كما صليت وسلمت على سيدنا وحبيبك رسولك في الله وفي عالمه انك حميد مجيد اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد الفاتح لما اعطيت الخاتم لما سبق ناصر الحق بالحق الهادي الى صراطك المستقيم وعلى اله حق قدره ومقداره العظيم صلاة تعرفنا بها اياه سبحان ربك رب العزه عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين واقيموا الصلاه.